The topic of this lecture will be substitution and elimination reactions. These are the two main classes of reaction that revolve around molecules that have a good leaving group. A leaving group is a molecule or portion of a molecule that can leave a larger molecule, taking the bonding electrons with it. In a substitution reaction, another atom or portion of a molecule replaces the leaving group. Because the atom that does the replacing is a nucleophile, this is commonly called nucleophilic substitution. The general reaction involves a nucleophile, which has a lone pair of electrons and often a negative charge, although sometimes it's just a partial negative charge. Remember, a nucleophile only requires the presence of a lone pair of electrons that can act to form a new bond through donation to another atom. The other reactant required for a substitution reaction is an electrophile. The electrophile contains the leaving group. The nucleophile donates its electrons to form a new bond to the electrophilic carbon, the carbon bound to the leaving group, and the leaving group leaves, taking its bonding electrons with it. This is called a nucleophilic substitution reaction because the nucleophile substitutes for the leaving group on the electrophile, or substrate. In an elimination reaction, a similar substrate is typically used. However, in this reaction, the leaving group leaves with another atom, and a pi bond is formed. The substrate for this reaction will look the same as for the substitution reaction, but rather than a nucleophile, the other reactant will be a base. The base deprotonates the carbon next to the carbon with the leaving group, giving us the conjugate acid of the base, a new pi bond between those two carbons, and the leaving group with its bonding electrons. The Bronsted-Lowry base is deprotonating the substrate. The bonding electrons from that proton are used to form the new pi bond, and the leaving group leaves with its bonding electrons to form the given products. Just for comparison, let's look at the substitution reaction and elimination reaction side by side. Both reactions utilize a carbon substrate with a good leaving group. Additionally, both of these reactions utilize a base, although in the substitution reaction we're talking about a Lewis base, and in the elimination reaction we're talking about a Bronsted-Lowry base. The products differ because in the nucleophilic substitution reaction we have substituted the nucleophile, or Lewis base, for the leaving group on the substrate. In the elimination reaction, we've removed a proton in the leaving group using the Bronsted-Lowry base to give us a pi bond, a new pi bond. You should be able to tell the difference between these two reactions by recognizing the difference in the products. One gives us a substitution of the nucleophile for the leaving group. The other subtracts the leaving group and a proton to give us a new pi bond. Each of these reactions can proceed through two different mechanisms, a second order or a first order mechanism. In a first-order mechanism, the transition state of the rate-determining step involves only a single molecule. In other words, this mechanism has a unimolecular rate-determining step. A first-order or unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction is called an SN1 reaction. This abbreviation stands for Substitution Nucleophilic Unimolecular. A first-order elimination mechanism is called an E1 mechanism. This abbreviation stands for elimination unimolecular. Substitution and elimination can occur through a second-order mechanism as well, where the transition state of the rate-determining step involves two molecules. In other words, it has a bimolecular rate-determining step. A second-order substitution reaction is called SN2, which stands for substitution nucleophilic bimolecular, and an elimination reaction that it proceeds through a second-order mechanism is called E2, or elimination bimolecular.